Welcome to this week's episode of Tell Us Something We Don't Know, a serious chat with a comedian. And uh, this week, uh, as a guest, I have a very, very close friend of mine, someone who I've worked with for, for 25 years, really. Uh, Tahir. Tahir, welcome. How are you, mate? Yes, thank you so much. Did you just do I canned love laughter? that. Did you just bring canned laughter in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 You're the first guest who's bought their own sound effects. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, we're well, gonna have something. I've got like I've got it all here, by the way. So let me know if you want me to press a laugh or, or oh, okay. clapping or okay, cool, or a boo or or, a, or anything. I've got. I've all. never been booed. Can you boo me? Hi, my name's Joe Avati. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So those those of you um, listening from overseas who don't know Tahir, Tahir is one of Australia's best comedians, um, and uh, he's Turkish. And Tahir and I started working with each other twenty five years ago at the Comedy Store. So Tahir, so let's 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 yes. let's start there, eh? Let's start there. So I, yes, I, I, um, I started look, in we... July nineteen ninety six. So you would have started probably August. Do you remember the date you started? I don't remember the date. You're very good with that. So uh, uh, what what I do remember is this, like. I remember hearing about the Sydney Comedy Store. Yeah. I, I clearly, and per, somebody said to me, Joe, hey, there's a place you can go down there and anybody can just get up, like like the open mic night. And when I heard that, I thought that was the most exciting thing I heard. I, get, I couldn't wait to get down there. And so. But what, what, what happened before that? Because you see, I used to be able to tell jokes at parties, but they were yeah. old jokes. And someone goes, you should have a go. So what happened to you? So if you rewind back, my first thing, mm-hmm. and I haven't told the story before, right? is um, yeah. I was in primary school, Beverly Hills North. Yeah. And right. I, I, I love sport. You know I love sport. I play all different sports. Yeah. And, we, and, we, and, we, and for we those play... of you listening from overseas, Beverly Hills in Sydney, Australia, is <laughs> yeah, nothing right. like Beverly Hills in LA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Beverly Hills, not 90210. Like, um, but yeah. Yeah, it's very, very different. Um, <laughs> but, you know, look, so we played sport. I was in year... Yep. Uh, I think I was in year six at the time, year five yeah. or six. And yeah. we're on this bus coming back. And every yeah. time uh, when you came back, the teacher would pick a student to give the sports report. Right. Right. And all the kids would be scared because you had to get them in front of the whole assembly and yeah, give right. the sports report. And then right. it was finally my turn. And I remember clearly thinking, oh, I'll just do it. You know, I'll just do it. Yeah. It, it didn't, didn't scare me. It didn't phase me. Yeah. I got up and turned into a comedy routine. Wow. It was the first time I thought, year you know, six. I'm going to just year six and wow. then, uh, simple stuff like, you know, uh, hey, 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 I, like, uh, hey, 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 I've got something to say. OK, yeah. laugh straight away like, yeah. because yeah. you don't expect that from a, a you know, from a, a 10, 12 year old boy. You know, like, yeah. and yeah. then I then I get to things like uh, it was a very exciting game. The crowd were on their feet, uh, mainly because there was no chairs and just. <laughs> <laughs> I, I clearly remember just stuff pretty like good, that. Pretty good for yeah, a, yeah. For a year six, yeah, for a year six. And then, yeah. and I clearly remember, like you know, it got to the stage where they picked me every week to do the sports report mm-hmm. in front of the whole school in the, in the assembly hall. And I was, yeah. it was like a buzz. And right. then when I got up, there was like murmur, murmurs in yeah, the right. audience. The teachers would be about like they go like this, like you know. Yeah. And I, I clearly remember that one week, right, Joe? I get up and yeah. there's huge anticipation, and yeah. I gave a straight one. Like, right. no jokes. Wow. Just as a point of difference to say, hey, guys, yeah. you don't always get the candy, right? Yeah, yeah, and right. I, as a boy, I remember thinking, to me, that was funny. Right. Just because I, I want to <laughs> yeah, It was funny to you because you're, you, now you're a comedian in your head. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And you want to play with people's minds. That's it. That's is that, and I, I just, I remember clearly everyone was, like, hey, what happened there? He just gave a normal report, you know? But then the yeah. following week, I was back. And, and that's how, like, it started there. And in high school, um, yes, I, I used to muck around a lot. Always yeah. did my work. Uh, so I was basically the, the 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 class clown that could do his work, if you could, if you could, you know. So always was studious and conscientious. Um, and then I used to just be interested in comedy, like collect comedy movies and 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 you know write down funny funny quotes. When, when I heard a funny quote, I used to write it down. And and I, I didn't know why I was doing it. Like I go, why am I? I had a folder full of like ideas and stuff. I I just keep and collate and cut out stuff, funny articles, and put on this comedy. I don't know why I was why I even did that, you know. Uh, so and then I went to um, you know I I studied teaching, which we can talk about later on. So 
um, you know, I, I actually studied teaching as opposed to someone doing a Bachelor of Arts and then want to become a teacher later on. I, I think there's a big difference there and we can come yep. to that um, later okay, in the so show. So you've done that and then, uh, and then so, from there you... you, you and at uni, yeah. again, collecting stuff, stuff like, you know, doing teaching, um, you know, while at uni... And then I, I finished sort of, I think just at the end of year, uh, yeah, went out to do some teaching yeah. first a couple of years. And then I heard about the comedy store and I was just blown away. Now I go, what? You mean anybody can get up? I, I still couldn't get there, mate. Like, yeah, you just rock up, you write your name down and you get up in front of yeah. an audience. I go, yes, that is yeah. me. But, you know, Joe, I, I don't know if you know, I, th I think you know this, but we'll tell all the, all the yeah. listeners. I turned up. 100% I was going to write, I wrote my nine down for the open yep. mic and I was going to yep. go on. But I, but I chickened out because the, the, the heart was beating yep. and I chickened out. And I said, no, 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 not this week, not this week. I'll come back next week when I'm ready. Yep. I came back second week and again, I chickened out. I knew I was going to do it, but I chickened right. out. And I said, no, no, no. Uh, I think I'll just watch this right. week. I'm not quite ready, yep. even though I yep. was ready, right? And my mates came with me. I, I, I had three mates that came yep. with me every yep. week thinking okay. I was going to make my debut. And then finally, right, I, you know, week five yeah. came. Five weeks, I kept yeah. this up. Five yeah. weeks. And then I get this week, I'm going to get up for sure. Yeah. And then by then, I think I'd met you and, and I liked you straight away because I, oh, he's a, yeah, like, you know, we're similar, you know. You know. Well, but, but I don't, I don't have just started about a month before you. Yeah, but you were good. You were, I go, this guy's good. <laughs> you know, you, you were getting <laughs> laughs off the bat. Yeah. You know, like, okay, he was good. You're getting laughs. Yeah. You, you know, yeah, good. Uh, so the comedy store, just for, so, so it's on the pa corner of Paramount Road and Crystal Street in Petersham in Sydney, Australia. Yeah. That's where we're talking. Yep. And um, so that's where I started. I'm, I've, got, I've gone there. I've done it for about a month. Now, and I didn't yep. know that you were there. I, I never remember seeing you sort of in the wings putting your name down. I don't remember that. But I do remember what happened was, the uh, night that you were going to get up. <laughs> Yeah, we'll, we'll tell us because I was turning up and I was chicken and out. Like I turn up, I go, no, 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 I'm not yeah. ready yet. They go, you want to go on tonight? Yeah. No, no, next week, next week, I'll watch yeah. again. It's, it's very. But what um, can I just ask? Because what made you get there first? Like you know, I, I, I because heard, I didn't actually ask because you I, in, 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 quickly in a nutshell, I mean, it's not po it's a podcast about you, not me. But <laughs> no, but I still yeah. We'd like well, to what know, happened like, was we, we, I, I basically I wanted to be a rock star. My dad said, no, there's no rock stars in Calabria, mate. Go and do something else. <laughs> so I did a, a double degree in, in science, majored in food science. While I was in my honours year, I thought, okay, what can I do to be famous? Because I wanted to be famous. Ha-ha, comedy. I had this great memory for jokes, for just old jokes. And I would get up at parties and just recite jokes. So I would say one, someone else would say one. I would say another one, someone else would say one, I would say two or three, and eventually people went, oh, this guy knows all the jokes, just leave it to him. So by the end of the night, I was getting up <laughs> saying old jokes right, r r at parties. Then I, same, same with you, loved comedy, just, and I thought, oh, I want to go for a tryout night. My friend Carlos said, there's a, there's a tryout night at the comedy store. So I went, okay. I had a look, I had some material written down from, from the past, I put it down, yep. so, so you, as you know, when you get there, you can't just do old jokes. You have to do original material. So what I did, I started with an old joke. I did some more original material in the in the, in the middle, yeah. and then finished with an old joke, just to make sure that I started with a laugh and ended with a laugh. And that's how it started. I think one of my first ever jokes was, my real name's not Joe, it's Giuseppe. I can never find a mug with my name on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I love that. <laughs> <laughs> that was my first original gag that I wrote. And yeah, I remember yeah. writing that when I was a kid, because that's what I used to see, we used to see the mug and it yeah. had Shane, Brett, Simon. I, I never had a mug with Giuseppe. Right? Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> back to you. Back to it you. Wouldn't, it, wouldn't fit. it wouldn't fit anyway. But, but <laughs> can, can I like, imagine that you'd have to be like yeah. a huge, it'd have the to name be like a, a all the way around. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Or the name over, overhangs the, yeah. anyway. But do you remember like, so you found out about the club your first time yeah. you turned up there? I, I, love I, I don't just, remember. I don't I remember. Just, I, I just, I just remember. I, yeah. I remember going there a few times and thinking, okay, right. So this is what you've got to do. You can't just get up here and tell old jokes. You've got to right. come back with 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 original material. So Pe that's what I did. Pe so I went yeah. away, wrote some original material. I came back, and um, I think one. And, and you know, now I'm very clean. But back then, I was. I used to swear. I was a little bit dirty. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, think, yeah. I think one of my. Yeah. 
I think one of my first you routines had some was... some cheeky jokes. I remember you had some cheeky yeah, jokes. Yeah, I think one of my first routines was about Gilligan's Island. Like, you know, that would have been funny if it was a porno. <laughs> I think that. <laughs> imagine the, the, the professor now. and Marianne, and then, you know, um, uh, the skipper. Come here, little buddy. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I think it was something like that. You know, and, but pe- but people can understand yeah. like when you rock up to a comedy club yeah. and you know with fully full full intention to yeah. go up, but the nerves and you go and and it's not like I, I didn't feel like uh, I'm never yeah. going to do this. I felt like I was going to yeah. do it. But the nerves, the energy, the excitement, the anticipation in yeah. front of strangers yeah. was like, yeah. I had three mates there in the audience yeah. as well. So I turn up on the fifth yeah. week to go back to yeah. our story, right? And I turn up, and because it was an open mic night, I think it was Tuesday yeah, night. Tuesday night, memory. that's right. Yeah, every um, Tuesday night. The crowds would, the crowds would be uh, yeah. varied. So some weeks you turn up and there'd be 100, some weeks there'd be 20, some weeks there'd be like 50 yeah. or, or yeah. 30. It'd be very yeah. small. On this particular yeah. week, when I decided I was going to definitely yeah. get up, the numbers were so yeah. small that they moved the yeah. show from the main room to the front yeah. bar of the yes, whole I pub. So there was a comedy room at the I back. I remember clearly that night. Pro- yeah, professional room at the back with stage, yeah. seating, tiered, beautiful room. But then there was a front part of the yeah. pub. And it was like the front part of the pub, just to paint the picture for you, there was a bar like yeah. Cheers, then the room, and then the windows, right? Yeah. And then from the windows... It was Parramatta Road, which is one of the busiest roads you'll probably get in Australia. Probably the busiest road in Australia. Anyway, yeah. Probably the, the busiest. Buses yeah. coming past, yeah. you know, like li- literally meters. And where they put the... I rocked up. I go, what's yeah. going on? They go, so I put my name down. They go, what's going on? They go, not enough numbers, and we're going <laughs> to change the show from there to front bar, right? For some reason, because it was like, I, I think it was like yeah, 10, 10 or 12 or so, people really, only. 10 or 12 yeah. people. And there they were probably the more comedians up, than there were... Guests, yeah, yeah, patrons, yeah. And so they set the stage up right against the yeah. window, right? So you the behind you is the footpath, yeah. and then two meters after that is yeah. Parramatta Road with buses, right? trucks, and they set up cars, a, everything buses, yeah. trucks, and they set up a black screen. Yeah. And I'm looking around, and I clearly remember I saw two old, sort of drunk guys at the yeah. bar, clearly not there for yeah. the comedy, they were just there having yeah. a drink, yeah. And I'm going, This cannot be my debut. <laughs> I clearly remember that. I said, this cannot be my... And you got yeah, up I that did. night. Yeah. I remember. You were up there. I go, look at Joe. He's yeah. up like good yeah. on him, you know? when you're starting out, so you just do... I, you, you'll give anything a go. And some of the gigs that we did... I remember doing a yeah. gig where the microphone was one of those microphones where... It's like one of those ones that, like <laughs> in a shop counter where they, they push the button. Uh, uh, we need help at <laughs> checkout number three. Checkout number three, we need help. So to do... To perform, I had to push the button yeah. and hold this microphone and talk into this microphone. <laughs> and it went throughout the whole entire club, including levels where people were having dinner. <laughs> so people were having dinner, oh, and all they could hear was so this guy trying stories. to tell jokes, but no laughter because all the laughter was downstairs. <laughs> most bizarre thing, the most bizarre things that we did. Anyway, go. Very bizarre. But so you know how long? This is 25 week. years ago now. Because... I, I'm, yeah. I'm celebrating my 25th anniversary. Next year's a massive tour to celebrate the 25th. An- so this is 25 years ago that we're talking. I love when you celebrate all the milestones because it reminds me how long yeah. I've been doing it for. Yeah, you, you're you know one I mean? month so, behind. Yeah, yeah. I should. So then I turn up to six weeks. Six weeks it took yeah. me. So the following week, like, because I was definitely on that week, I was going to, I was definitely getting, getting, going to yeah. get up. I go, yep, I was 100 percent up, and I saw the situation. I said, nah, this can't be my yeah. debut. Forget it. Six week, the following week was back in the normal room, had a bit of a crowd, got up, three mates. They loved, you know, when you got some yes. mates in the audience and you're doing it for the first time, they will laugh they at will. anything. They were my yeah. support crew, right? But the interesting was, okay, they were enjoying it and they were getting kicked, but so were some other yeah. people. And that was yeah. the key. I thought, okay, I made them laugh, yeah. but I, you know, I got some other people laughing and then uh, then we're away, like, you know, just trying to, Turn up every week. I remember turning up every, every week, single every week. Tuesday night. Writing down. Yeah. Similar, like, and we had a lot of people that have sort of gone on to do big yeah. things. Our group was like, you know, incredible. Really? Really. Well, the people that came out of really... our group were Carl Barron, uh, Kitty Flanagan, yep. Julia Morris, yep. yourself, myself, Akmal, yep. uh, Anthony Murr, Steve, Steve Hughes. Hughes, Steve Hughes, yep. who's like, you know, Tom, Tom Gleason. Great things and. Tom Gleason, it was an incredible group. Yeah, like, so you know, 
Uh, all these people are now have gone on to become big TV stars in around Australia. For those of you who don't know who they are, I mean, yeah. Carl Barron's probably one of the biggest, biggest acts in the country, really. He is the biggest selling act in Australia. Act in Australia like, yeah. like, his numbers are just incredible. Yeah. Um, and then I remember, like, you know, three or four weeks. Um, and I, I've got a story uh, about Carl, and I want, I'll tell you. In a what, what was the name? What, what was the name of the uh, the, the manager? Jane manager? Sweet Apple. Jane, Jane, she's yeah. great. And many years ago, like many years yeah. later, like I remember, she came to Edmore for a gala. Yeah. She was in the right. audience, and I actually gave her a shout right. out. Yeah, I said, "Jay, yeah, it, it was just so great to yeah. see her like there." But she was great because she was very supportive. Very supportive, yeah. And and, and she was she'd say things like, you know, yeah, I, I did some, uh, I, I'll do an old yeah. gag. She go, "Look, don't do that yeah. old gag." It's yeah. just, it's you know, and she'd be very, but she'd do it in a gentle way, yeah. not in a, yeah. you know. So she was supportive of people that she knew was was trying hard. And and three weeks later, I think I remember three four weeks. I got invited to do, do you remember when, if you did okay and you started getting some things, you started doing like this Saturday night, not not paid, but just five minutes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I would always try and get up on fire and that was electric. Yes, yes. If when you killed on a Saturday night, even though it was five minutes, it, mate, you were on a high incredible. for the week. It's un- unbelievable. And, and yeah. so... And the whole thing was trying to get 15 minutes to get a paid support act. You know, just as a yes. paid as yeah. a support. That was, and I remember the first time, like, it was a big deal just seeing your name on the, on, on, on the thinking, oh my God, I'm this week, I'm going to get, yeah. and it wasn't. Yeah. The, 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 I've kept all those flyers too. I've kept them all. Did you? I've, I've got them. I've got all the flyers. So I would have flyers with your name I on I love that. I, 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 think, I'm, yeah. you know, I might have a couple too. So that's, we're very yeah. similar. So we, re, we love yeah. it. But, so. I remember clearly, it wasn't about the money. It was just getting up and getting 15 minutes yeah, right. and, and paid. Because it was like 117 bucks a gig or something back there. $117.50 I remember that. No, I remember clearly because I still never yeah. my first pay. Because you did an early late show, right? People got to know yeah, your right. early late show. Yeah. And yeah. it was 60 bucks for support, yeah. 60 and 120 bucks. And yeah. I lost 30 bucks of tax. $90 right. I got for two gigs. Yeah. <laughs> I was pumped. So, and, and these gigs were 15 minutes each. Yep. And you were there for the whole night. And I was just pumped. So if anyone thinks there's a lot of money in comedy, oh, think again. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, obviously that wasn't like, you know, I was teaching and earning money then, but like yeah. this was like a bonus. Yeah. I go, oh my God, I just earned money doing comedy. It just blew my mind yeah. away. I go, this is yeah. just incredible. And I didn't care about that. Um, and then uh, that's how it all started. That's how all the whole thing yeah. started. And now, let, let's go back to before you did comedy. You, 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 I know there's a lot of funny mm. stories about you as a teacher. This is what one of the questions I had for you was, so when you actually started doing it and you started yep. getting a little bit of a name, uh, were you teaching high school? or I'm sure you I was high, high school. school so, yeah, I was, yeah. Um, so Did anyone ever come? Did any of, any, any of the kids ever see you do stand-up and go, oh, my God, sir, what are you doing? Did you do yes, stand-up? They did. Oh, my God, there's our teacher. Or did you ever do stand up to the students at school before you even did it professionally? Let, let let's go back before that. Let's yes. tell us some stories from there. Yes, to both those questions. So I was uh, I, I was doing comedy and I was doing open yeah. mic. It was you know for a couple. And I was getting some uh, good good traction here and there. Yeah. And then when I was teaching, uh, so I t- I did English history and drama. Right. I majored, right. Um, and and I, I sort of in the end, even though I majored in history, I became a drama English teacher. Specialized yeah. in drama, um, yeah. and you know, I loved teaching. I, I, I love that job, Joe. Like you know, people yeah. got to understand. Like, so people might not know. Like, and people might not know I was a teacher, but they sort of do now because I talk about it in my routines. Yeah, um, right. Yeah. But I was because the course I did at Sydney Uni four years was a yeah. teaching course yeah. of a Bachelor of Humanities. So it was right from day one. It was all geared towards teaching. So that's a, mm-hmm. I think like uh, it's an important point because a lot of people do. An arts degree, yeah, and they go. What am I going to do now after three years? Okay, I'll become a teacher. Last minute, yeah. or they switch, or yeah. Whereas yeah. you know, and I think psychology is very important. I love psychology. In yeah. another lifetime, I agree. I would have been a psychologist. I love psychology. That's why, when you know, I was like you. You love psychology too, right? I love it. And yeah, and absolutely. I look at the psychology of performing, mm-hmm. the jokes, the audience. You, you know yeah. what makes him. What gets bigger laughs? What you know? I, I love all yeah. that, like the whole setting. Yeah. So, yeah. one of the most interesting topics for me when I was teaching, like when we were at uni, was the psychology. Right? I loved it, yeah. and I applied that at, at, in, in the classrooms. And I'm looking around, wow. and people go, "Why are your classrooms so quiet?" And people are like, you know, some of the, the 
whereas kids like that, and because I used to be there, we used to have a great time, we used to give the kids a laugh, but then mm -hmm. they do their work, right? Well, was it the school that you were teaching at, was that a, was that a, a school that was a little bit, it's called rough? James was, Basby was High that, School what, did have a bad reputation, but right. it had a young staff when I was there, and we turned it around. Yeah. It actually won some awards, right. and it's incredible. Yeah. But I used to teach, I used to see, um, you know, teachers just screaming and shouting, sit down, shut, I go, how could you do that every single day? You got to. Oh, that'll be traumatic. You got to get yeah. strategies. Not only for, for the teacher, but for the kids as well. Yeah, you got to develop strategies. And I, I turn yeah. up. Like, I taught my kids when I t when I turn up the classroom, two two lines. That's it. That all line up. Even though if they were out of school, mm -hmm. you know, that all walk in the that all go into class, get their stuff out. Yeah. I'd be at the door, Joe. I wouldn't enter until right. it's quiet. Like right. The kids would understand it. I, so I don't want to enter the classroom and say, okay, everybody quieten down. Excuse me, excuse me. I don't want to start like that. I go and relaxed, right. quiet, yeah. and we start a thing, right? I have all the naughty kids, you know, yeah. um, around my desk. See, right. I didn't let them sit wherever they wanted. Yeah, of course. Okay, so some, they're going to do whatever they want. Some kids, right? yeah. They're going to be at the back of the class talking. Exactly. Some yeah. kids, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, sure. They're good kids. That, But all the ones that I, I had about six of them around my desk, right in front of me. Mm -hmm. And everyone else had, yeah. like, I had a lot of them. I wouldn't, like, if someone took, you'd walk around a classroom, I'd just put a hand on a table. And that'd be enough yeah. to um, quieten something down. No raising voice. Not like our dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a smack across the back of the head. But you know, before that school, before James Busby, yeah. which was my last school, I taught at Sefton High School, which was a semi-selective uh, school, meaning right. half the class, half the school came from, uh, you know, the local area, and, yeah. and half the half the school was selective kids. So basically, gifted, kids. gifted and talented kids, right? So, gifted and talented kids, right? Yeah. And that was my first. <laughs> like I, there's got to be some hilarious stories out of that mate, I had a class right I had a class yeah. 30 kids maximum because they're gifted and talented they don't muck around yeah. so when it was right. gifted and talented they went to the 30 maximum otherwise they kept it around 22 I'd give them a novel they'd devour it in a day they didn't care mm -hmm. bang it'd be gone one yeah. two days gone Yeah. I'm yeah. telling you this is true Joe half the kids had a massive like massive Stephen King novel on their on their tables these are the gifted kids. Yeah, the gifted talent class. Yeah, yeah. Right. They would do their work, and as soon as they finished, yeah. they get into the Stephen King novels and read. Wow. Until yep. my next instruction came, right? Right. And it was just it, it blew me away, right? It was, and 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 what were the other kids doing? No. What were they reading? Well, no, they just do that. But at least fifteen out of thirty had those thick novels, right? Yeah, right. And the other yeah. ones just stood, just sat there, waiting for the yeah. next instruction, but. Yeah. I remember one time, you want to hear a story? So this gift and talent class, Joe, I clearly remember. I said, right, I got these exam results, right? And when you when you tell them there's a test, they go they go crazy. They go absolutely bananas. Like they go, oh my God, test. What what sort of test? How much is it worth? What's going to be in it? They go they go nuts. Yeah. And I gave the results back and then they're all eager for the results too because they're just yeah. driven. Like it's, it's sad in a way really. But um, I said, you know, I remember one kid. I said, I've got some good news and bad news. Right, the good news is you got eighty nine percent in your exam. The bad news is you came last. <laughs> That's great. Eighty nine percent last, and I felt bad for this kid. You know? Yeah, you know I, I clearly remember, and and just one one quick story. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine that? So I don't even. How did he I, take it? I'm he was devastated. Was a boy. It was, it was devastated. All boy school. Yeah, it was a boy. Yeah. Uh, no, it was co-ed. He was oh, devastated. Oh, co-ed, okay. Devastated. That's a little bit of girl, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah he, it, was, it was a he, but, uh, mm. but you know, I think we're better off. I know why they put them together, because they try to drive the standard up. They're right. better off just being at a school and being the ducks mm. and, and being positive reinforcement. But anyway, that's another. Yeah. But get this, Joe, like one story before we move on. I yeah. remember this class, gifted and talented yeah. class. I was walking on the second level of the school, like, you know, and I, I looked down and they were doing PE, physical education. And I'll never forget it, right? I, st I, go, I go, I'm going to stop and watch, see what happens, right? One kid who was really probably the smartest in the class, but the, one of the biggest nerds, he was there as well. And we, I, I wanted to watch what was happening. They played volleyball. This is a true story, by the way. Absolutely true. They're playing volleyball, the PE teacher. And back and forth, and whoever missed the ball or did a bad shot, had to were, were eliminated 
and they had to sit out, right? Right. Straight away, this kid, I won't name, first out straight away, the nerd, yeah. right? Yeah. Gone yeah. straight away. He's out. He's out straight away. First, yeah. he sits down. And I'm watching this. Mm -hmm. I, I'm intrigued. He sits down. What does he do? Does he watch the rest of the game, Joe? No, what, is he, what do you think he does? He gets a book out, right? Straight yeah. away. Yeah. Outside, on the, he gets a book out, starts reading the book, naturally, yeah. right? Yeah. And I'm watching. I, I couldn't believe what he's doing. I've never seen that before. Never in my, in, you know. And the losing team had a punishment. They had to run to the fence and back as punishment. Naturally, this kid's team loses, right? Yeah. So the whole group had to go to the fence yeah. and back, run back. He ran with his book. <laughs> I am not making the... I, I couldn't believe what I'm watching. So the whole pack... Was he still went, reading it as he was... As still he was reading. Like, and, and what happened was because he wasn't paying attention, yeah. <laughs> right, the, the group ran as a group, right? Yeah. And he sort of veered off. He sort of yeah. just ve veered off because he wasn't... He, he was looking down at the book. Yeah. I could not believe what I was <laughs> what I was watching. So, and you know they had these gifted and talented camps and things. And but you know I think the kids are better off just being the smartest in their class or the school rather than it was intense competition. Intense competition, of course, you have some people that just fall off, you know, d down the side. So, yeah. you know, I had in my class at James Busby High School, I had a very good reactions. Uh, that, that were you know I had good, I lo implemented a lot of psychological things. And this, the, it was like the Le David Letterman show. The first couple of minutes would be comedy. Yeah, right. Kids would laugh. They'd have a laugh. Yeah, so this, then... is, this is what I was, what I was what I'm trying to get at. Did you actually mm. do any sort of stand-up? Yeah, you know? I did some crazy I mean, stuff. Not, I did... not, your, not the stand-up that you were doing at the comedy store, but just, you know, everyday situational kind of comedy. 100%. You know? 100%. Like, I'd put, funny quotes on the, I'd put funny quotes on the doors, which the, the kids would yeah. love, especially the senior kids. Every day, they'd, yeah. uh, so every week, they'd change. And they go, and, they, and I didn't realize, but when you didn't do it, they go, hey, where's the quote? What happened to quote? So people were looking out for it, inspirational, funny. Um, I did, I would do some routines and jokes with the seniors, not the juniors, uh, the year, year 11, year 12. And we used to do crazy stuff like, you know, I'm surprised I didn't get sacked. When the, um, when the messenger used to come in, right? The messenger to, we go, hang on, wait, can you go outside? And we close the door. All the kids would get the uh, screwed up, you know, the papers and yeah, the balls. Yeah, yeah. And he'd come in, we'd pelt him. <laughs> we'd pelt him. <laughs> he would so have a laugh. You're organising all this in the class. I'm organising all this. I'm, yeah. I'm leading the charge. Yeah. Um, and the kids would have a laugh and there'd be no one injured. And then uh, just a yeah. bit of light entertainment for the kids, you know. Yeah. You know, and, um, and as they say, you know, if you include humour in anything that you're learning, uh, mm. you, your, your retention rate increases to about 80 or 82%. So, right. so the, you know, there should be a lot more comedy in classrooms and any retired comedians should end up being teachers. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of teachers who've, 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 who've left the uh, teaching industry. I reckon it happens all around the world. It's, you know, it's underpaid. Um, not, I mean, people go, would you go back yeah, to teaching? Yeah, you have teaching? to be a kind of certain person to be a teacher. Yeah, people yeah. often ask, always, would you go back to yeah. teaching? I said, I can't afford to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't afford the pay cut. I can't afford right. a pay cut. <laughs> you know? I'd rather earn the 120 bucks at the comedy store, to be honest. It's, 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 and deal with the two drunks. 30 minutes work, yeah. Yeah, you know, one time at the comedy store, early and late show, uh, we, we did the early show, it was packed, right? And then it just bucketed down, rain. It was intense rain. Like, like you never believe for. And come the late show, and not one person turned up. It's incredible. Yeah, I think, you know, I, think, I, I, that, that, I vaguely have a memory of that. I, Nobody I, I was there. Of that. Yeah. And we were like pumped because, oh my God, we still get paid for two shows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you also remember that the late show, right, on a Friday night was the hardest show. The late yeah. show anywhere in the world on a Friday night is the hardest show. People are tired yeah. uh, from a long week, working week. They're drunk yeah. sometimes. Uh, the, all, the drunks were always in the, the hecklers were always in the second show. So the first yeah. show started, I think, at what, about... 7.30, was it? Or 7 o'clock, I can't remember. Yeah, the late yeah. show started at 9.30. Amazing. So let's go back to those days. What yeah. happened after that? So I remember you were a very shrewd um, operator, mate. You were like me. We, all the WOG Canadians were, you know, really <laughs> business-minded. It was like, okay, I had a business. I remember some, there was a comedian called Fred Lang who made fun of me because I had a business card. Yeah, you know? yeah, I, I, I remember young, that. I remember and I, it. And I had a business card. And I'm like, bro, what do you want me to do? You know, I'm a, I'm a comedian now. I've got to get work. I've got to, I've got to, you know, show people, give people my number. 
right? And, and I remember getting hassled for that. But we were very sure. But you were also a great improviser. How well, did that come about? J- just before we get to that, Joe, uh, you should explain the word wog to people from the UK. Yeah, okay. Because if they're listening, like that's a very detrimental term here. But in Australia, we've sort of claimed the word back. Um, that's right. So wog refers to anyone who's mm. sort of European, um, but not Anglo-Saxon, not yeah. Asian and not Indian, but European, Italian, Greek, Lebanese, Turkish, you know. Not, and not, it's not as offensive as it once was. It's not as, and no, it's not. And, no, and it's, it's not. Uh, yeah, and, it, and it's different in the UK. We know it's it's a different sort of meaning there. Uh, but uh, and, and I remember your business card. And here's the difference. This is why we got along. Yes. These other experienced comedians, uh, they had a go at you, right? Yeah. I remember thinking, what a fantastic idea. Yeah, I thought, well, yeah, yeah, yeah maybe because we're an open mic and we're pushing and we're, we're both sort of like, you know, we were both like, you know, uh, yeah. motivated and we want to do well. And, and we had, but maybe that, that's what put them off. I don't know. But like, um, but you, I, I clearly remember, um, you know, we, we, we had some success. And yeah. we, whilst I was at school, by the way, whilst I was at school. That's right. We both I, did the I footy show. I got a footy show. That's right. So the, yes. the kids, the kids were blown away. Like I would be at school uh, and they'd go home on a Thursday night to watch me live on the footy show. You know, and yes. then and they come back the next day, it blew their minds, right? So we had a little yeah. bit of early success and you started um, getting some fantastic success because I still remember your story. Uh, you, you you know, we were doing some weddings and different different sort of functions yeah. and you threw some Italian in at a wedding and it That's went right. off and, and I the light bulb just went off in your head, right? And That's I, right. Yeah. Yes. And then you know, and that's right. Then I started getting sort of, I uh, started getting a big following. Yep. Right. This was around 1999 by this stage. Yep. Right. 90s, 98, 99. And, um, and then I started selling out uh, the uh, Parramatta Riverside Theatre. Yes. And I needed a support, an opening act. And yep. I got you. Yep. I, I still clearly remember because you said, and, and you were getting some incredible numbers. So you booked. The Parramatta Riverside Theatre for six weeks. Six, six weeks, shows right. a week. Yes, six, that's right. 36 shows, right? Yes. And you, yeah. and you said, listen, I need someone to uh, to open up and host and, you know, yeah. And, yeah. and I said, yeah. And I, I clearly remember, like, I thought to myself, 36 shows, can I do this? Like, you know, it was a big thing, you know? Like, it was, it was a big thing. And, when you're first starting out and you're selling yeah. that many shows, I think it was like 200, 220 people a night or something like that. It was, that's uh, big. And uh, I remember, like... <laughs> It was incredible. And I remember like every night, uh, there was uh, obviously every, uh, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, they're all sold out. And But even yeah. some of the midweeks, they're all well yeah. attended. If they weren't sold out, yeah. there was always a good crowd. There was never yeah. a small crowd. Like, you know, yeah. and that six weeks, Joe, um, and, you know, and a lot of people should know, and, and I'm not sure if you're aware of it, that was a big deal for me because I actually honed my MC skills and yeah. my improvisational skills because like every night you know I, I, I thought well I'm not going to just keep doing the same jokes I thought let me muck around with the audience a bit yeah let me have a bit of fun let me try this yeah. let me try that and I got really comfortable with the audience and really you know started getting some sort of improvisational skills um, yeah. which I always loved anyway but yeah. that was it that six weeks and also the other thing I remember I came out of it six weeks and I, I loved it I, I didn't get bored I didn't get sick of it. I thought, so that was a test why I said yes to it. I said, I'm going to see how I, how I go, how I feel at the end of it. And I thought, absolutely loved it. I, I, I thought, oh, I was sad it finished. I was actually yeah, sad I it remember. finished. I remember, you know? yeah. And I go, man, that was a great six weeks. And it was just, it was a great, and I thank you for the for the opportunity too. But oh, it was, mate, just, it was, it was just what it was. And it was beautiful. Fantastic. Do you remember we even had Ando? Ando came and, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and opened up a couple of nights. Yeah, uh, but it wasn't his audience. It, it was, yeah, it wasn't his audience at that time. And there's a photo. I'll, I'll, I'll try and find it and and put it up when we edit this uh, uh, the, the the podcast. There's a photo of you, Arn, and myself backstage. That's a great photo. Yeah. I remember that photo. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I've got a, I've got a whole selection of those photos. Yeah, we were doing some silly yeah. stuff. Now let, let's get let's get on to some juicy stuff. Now, now, how? So where did you go from there? Right. So how, mm-hmm. from from there, you're doing stand up. How did then did you become popular in Australia? Was it through the footy show? 
Well, look, the, the footy show was the first time I got a little bit of um, uh, recognition, if you like. Yes. And you've yeah. got to remember, like, the footy show was live. People got to understand yeah. this. Like, we were crazy. Like, you know, yeah. we, we hadn't been doing comedy that long. Here, yeah, here oh, we are on, on live TV, one of the yeah. most popular shows back then. Back then, there was about a million viewers every Thursday yeah, night, was, I remember. And I when you did that show, you'd walk out Friday. You'd, I remember doing the show yep. on the Friday, walking around Sydney, yep. and people would be pointing and staring. Yes, yes. That's, that's how right. That's how many people watched it, yeah. That was my first sort of experience with that, because like, I didn't think yep. about it. And I remember I did it back-to-back one time, and that was like, you know, the next day, I thought, oh, people, oh, okay, this is this is how it is when you're on TV. And, and you know, I remember like being backstage behind the set. It's just a wooden set and just waiting to go on. And this is live. They go, what are we, what are we thinking? Like, because if you do bad, right, everybody remembers. If you do well, which thank God we did. Okay, he's funny. That's a funny guy. We'll see him again. But if you do bad, that could, nobody will forget that. No one will forget that. And Nobody. there's been some bad stories of, you know, because it wasn't the easiest audience or, or the, like a no. live, you know, yeah. you know, a footy, footy crowd. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, Craig McLaughlin, as you know, he was he was an example of yeah. of going yeah. on. But, yeah, we people could so, look so that up. You, yeah, so how, okay, so, so, so from there, I, how did you get into, how, how, what sort of made you popular around Australia? Well, I, I was lucky enough to be on some hugely popular sitcoms uh, in yeah. Australia as well called uh, Fat Pizza. Um, yeah, of course. Fat yeah. Pizza, there was, and off the back of that was Swift and Shift Couriers, and then finally yeah. a sitcom called Houseos. And for each of yeah. those shows, we did movies as well, live tours. Yeah, they're all, yeah for, for yeah. people listening from Australia, you all know what they are. People listening from overseas, mm. you know, they, they, they were very, very successful shows. So people think like Fat Pizza, which is hugely successful, uh, you know, show, it, it, it yeah. broke records and it, it, did, it even changed Australian language uh, of fully yes. sick and all this sort of stuff, yeah. right? But yeah. I got a, uh, you know, I loved acting as well. Like, you know, I, I, yeah. I did some, uh, I did some courses on acting. I was, you know, I was yeah. a trained actor, loved drama, Joe. And yeah. so I had an acting agency and then she yeah. sent me to this audition at SBS, yeah. right, right. which is in North Sydney. I was, I was living in Western Sydney then, right? Yeah. Um, near yeah. Bankston Airport, George's yeah. Hall. And I remember clearly, I go, I don't want to, I don't want to drive to North Sydney too far. Yeah. Which is, it was a long way to go. It was across yeah. the Sydney Harbour Bridge. A city. It's a very Sydney thing to do. I don't want to, a lot of people don't want to go on to pass the bridge. Yeah, it it's was like, across It's the like city. in New York, the bridge and tunnel crowds, you know. That's what it was. Like, yeah. okay, it's a yeah. long drive across the Harbour Bridge. But because I'd said yes to it, and that's one of the yeah. things, like, if I say yes, I turn up. I don't just, yeah, I, go, sure. oh, Absolutely. I, just, I didn't want to turn up to this audition. Yeah. Because I said yes, I drove, I go there, I go, come to SPS. Paul Fennick, who's the um, creator of the show, Right, yeah. he does everything on the show. Yeah. And that's the first time I met him, right? Well, no, no, we, we met Paul. We met Paul. The first time you met Paul was, do you remember, he was recording a, a, a series called All Aussie Jokers, I think it was. They came after. And, oh, did that come after? Yeah, yeah, they came after, after that. Yeah. Okay. All they right. ca- they Sorry, came after, I, so. I, I stand corrected. Yeah, yeah. My, my first yeah. thing, I turn up to SBS, right? Yeah. Uh, what is this? And they go, okay, you're, you're up next. I go into this room. For, this is the audition. A normal yeah. audition, you get a piece of paper, you get some lines yeah. that tell you about the show, right? Yeah. And you memorize, and then you go perform in front of yeah. some people. I had no idea what the show's about. No idea, right? I, t- I turn up. I don't know what's going on. I got no lines. I walk into the room. There's only one person there, Paul Fennick. He's the only one there in the room. And he's got a camera, Joe, on his shoulder, if you get a picture. So I don't know what he looks like, right? I just, I turn up to a room. I got a guy with a camera he's looking for the lens and that's all I was, and I'm just standing there and going this is weird and from behind the camera on the spot he says to me do something yeah that's it yeah <laughs> do something yeah. of course at that stage the only thing I could think of was doing my comedy routine yeah right okay sure and and, and at that stage I was doing like the you know the ethnic characters from Bankstown yeah you know like oh my god all yeah, these yeah, sort yeah. of thick accents yeah. and and I could see from the camera like and the camera was going up and down. He was yeah, laughing. Yeah, I could see. Yeah. Right, and after a couple of minutes ago, he stops. He puts the uh, the camera down and he says, "Yep, I think I can use you." Yeah, that was the audition. Yeah, right. Yeah, of course. What did he see me as? He saw me as a drug dealer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He saw me as a dodgy drug dealer. Yeah, I turned to the set and I, I've got I've, I've give, 
I've been given this yellow tracksuit. Yeah. And uh, by the way, I should tell you the story, like which a lot of people don't know. My first day of filming, yeah. I was with a Greek guy right. who's my who's supposed to be my partner. Yeah. Right. Like it was supposed to be him and me, yeah. and he's supposed to be eating a kebab, yeah. and I'm supposed to be uh, having a giant bong. Right. On the couch watching TV. Yeah. And my that's my first day, and I remember right. going to Paul and going, Paul. Uh, I don't want to do this bomb because my mum might be watching. <laughs> of course. Yes, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I don't know why. Right? Normally, when I've seen other people say this sort of thing, yeah, he just yeah. axes them or sacks yeah, them. Yeah. But I think he liked me. Yeah. You know, you know we got along oh, you well. were great for that yeah. show. You, you and Rob and, made that show, you know? And he goes, all right. He goes, he yeah. swapped. Yeah. So he gave me the kebab and he gave the bomb to the Greek guy. Yeah. So he had to pretend he was like, yeah. uh, he was like Stone, out of yeah. it. And stoned, after that um, scene... And that episode, I never saw the Greek guy again. Right. Like, I never saw him again. Yeah. I don't know why. I just dis- They go, nah, maybe they saw his scene, saw the stone look, didn't like it. Yeah. He disappeared. So that could have been me, maybe. I could have had the bong and just disappeared. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Life is funny, right? Yeah. And, of course, like a couple of episodes later, um, Rob Shahady turned up. Yeah. And, and Is that where you first met Rob? Did you know Rob before that? First met him on the set. Wow. First met Paul Fennig on the set. Yeah. First met Rob on the set. Yeah. I remember clearly he turned up. We were in a, we were in the front seat of a car yeah. doing a scene in track suits. Yeah. And he was in, uh, we had some two girls in the back seat, yeah. right? And they were all giggling, all this sort of stuff. And I remember like in between takes, they hated us. Really? <laughs> <laughs> they like, because they were proper trained act- oh, actresses. Right, okay, yeah. Okay. You know, and yeah. they were giggling, like, yeah. you know. But in between they go, oh, we're too good for this. Yeah, and yeah. I remember Rob and I saying, look at these two, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. And we bonded over that. Like we yeah. we, we bonded over those yeah. two people. Yeah. Uh, and now but, and now Rob and you guys are the best mates. And of course, you know we've done oh, many my many best shows mates, yeah. together. You know. Yeah, he's one yeah. of the best mates, and we've done a lot of shows. And yeah. you know, now now you know, there's, there's a lot of other stuff I want to talk about, but there's two particular points um, that I want to that I want to discuss about you on on Fat Pizza and and, and mm-hmm. that. So you played a drug dealer, right? Yes. <laughs> now. And, and he was hugely successful. He was a very popular character. Yeah, yeah. Funny because right. he was just—he was comical. Yes. You know, and he, he was—and he was a loser as well. So people loved. Yeah. What was the was, name of the character? He was a drug again? dealer. Habib. Habib. Right. Okay. So he was a drug dealer, but he was a shit drug dealer. Yeah. Right. So you played a shit drug dealer on a very, yeah. very popular show. Now, yeah. we then all sort of met up years after that, and we started touring together, right? <laughs> and we started—we we, we, we did a lot of shows together. Um. We did Comica Erectus, Good, Bad, and the Ethnic, Straight Outta yes. Compo, right? We These were all, all live shows. All live shows, hugely successful. And, you know, we get thousands of people coming to the shows over the years. One particular night, well, two <laughs> things happened, which I, which blew my mind. I, I just didn't, I just, I just yeah, couldn't yeah. believe what I saw. So the first night, we were doing a show at the Comics Lounge in Melbourne, and we do a meet and greet afterwards. And we're there... And this guy comes up, obviously a huge fan of Habib in in the Fat Pizza. Now, Fat Pizza, it's not a reality TV show. It was just a funny sitcom, sort of a slapstick sort of a show. But people thought it was real. But people thought it was real. And I had no idea until I saw this with my very own eyes. This guy comes up, you were, you were sitting next, standing next to me, was signing autographs, signing DVDs. This guy comes yeah. up and goes, hey, Habib, how are you? And he drops onto the p- table... A bag about this big, full of marijuana. Yeah. Right? And I remember going, hey, no, we're all straight. We never did that sort of stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm going, what the hell is this guy doing? And I grab this, because, you know, it's a family show. Right? We've got kids <laughs> coming to the show. What's this guy dropping drugs onto the table for? Right? And I remember thinking, well, what's this about? Because, oh, bro, I, you said to me, bro, I get that all the time. Like, what do you mean you get that all the time? Because people think in real life that I'm a drug dealer, and 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 I thought, no way, that is just absurd. People that people could not decipher the fact that you were an actor that it was not a reality show. Anyway, people, yes, I don't know if it was that night or another night on tour. I think it was one of the last nights on the tour. We decided that we we never really went out a lot nightclubbing together. Yeah, yeah, no. This one particular night, we we're in Melbourne. We went to a nightclub called Love Machine. Right. <laughs> And we were there, and we had the whole crew, all of us, all of us. Yeah, it was like a cele- celebrating yeah. the end of a tour. I think it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you had all these sort of heavy guys, you know, a lot of Arabic looking guys, a lot of wag <laughs> ethnic looking guys coming up to you. The dodgiest guys, dodgiest the dodgiest guys, guys in the whole room, were coming up yeah. to you, but only 
only for a second or two. They'd come up, say something into your ear and then walk off. And you're watching this. And I'm watching this and I'm going, oh, jeez, I wonder if everything's all right. I'm sure, you know, I hope no one's, you know, trying to cause any trouble here with Tahir. And I said, Tahir, are you okay? And you went, yeah, yeah, I'm all right, bro. I said, <laughs> he said, why? I said, because oh, all these guys are coming up. Because, yeah, they're all offering me drugs. I said, what, what do you mean they're offering you drugs? Because, yeah, they're all, he goes, you know, I, and it was those two things that happened. Yeah, yeah. And I just, just thought it was the, the weirdest thing that people would think that you are actually a drug dealer, which you are completely the opposite to that character that you played. You are the straightest, Abs- cleanest guy yeah, yeah. that I've ever worked with. Right? I I, I've never, never even touched a cigarette, right? But when you say offering drugs, not, not to actually buy, like they'll actually say, hey, you're from that show. Yeah, like, that's right. Yeah, would you like some? Yeah. Would you like some? Like, it was all complimentary, yeah. right? Was all, hey, they get it. You want a bag? Like, yeah. like, no, man, I'm good. Like, um, and it, look, it happened. It happened quite a lot, especially on the tour when we did the Fat Pizza live t- tours, right? Yeah. And I clearly remember because uh, live was my background, and I went yeah. to Paul. I said, Paul, we should do a live uh, version of the show, yeah. and it was just it went insane. We did forty thousand tickets in Sydney, Joe, yeah. and forty thousand tickets nationally yeah. in, a, in a month. Yeah. It was incredible yeah. numbers and. It was at its height. Everybody was there. And on tour, right, and we do the meet and greets, right, yeah. people will come up and they give this secret handshake, yeah. right? And in the ha- in the palm would be whatever, joint, yeah. this, that, whatever. And and I'd feel like, oh, here we go. Someone's got something in the palm again. Yeah. You know? They're trying to s- sneakily give it to me. Well, what stuff would, you, Other what, time, would they give you? Like a joint? You know what a joint is, but whatever. They give you something Joints, in a bag. What? Marijuana, like one time, like I remember in Melbourne, yeah. I got like a clear liquid bag. I didn't even know what was in it. Just a bag like, full of liquid. If I saw it on the ground, I wouldn't even pick it up, right? Honestly, I wouldn't pick it up. But here's the thing, Joe. Here's the thing. This is this. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, even if I saw the marijuana, I wouldn't pick it yeah. up, right? But here's the thing, right? <laughs> now, when people get like sometimes they'd be brazen. They go, "Hey, here it is. You want you want something, Habib? Your Habib." In the beginning, Joe, and I would actually say, no, 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 I'm good, I'm good like that. And they wouldn't take no for an answer. They go, but you're happy the drug dealer, take it, take it. And there'd be this, there'd be this sort of conversation to go for like several minutes. They go, no, no. I'm if you were happy the drug dealer, wouldn't you have your own stash? Well, yeah, you would think so. You think so. But they were pumped. <laughs> They'd watch your live show. They wanted to give me something, right? Yeah, because that, that, that so that, so let's just take a step back here. Let's look at the psychology yeah. of that. The, the, these people, that, that's a, to them, they felt good. Yeah. To give you drugs. That's it. That was their transaction. That was just a meeting you know, that, great. That, that, that particular transaction gave them, so like they, they felt special. Yeah, they loved the character. It's interesting. Uh, I remember one yeah. time we were in Adelaide, and yeah. you got to remember, when we were doing these shows, we were groundbreaking that, I mean, it happens now all the time, yeah. but we had like live yeah. cameras to the to yeah. the screen. Now, it's pretty obvious, yeah. but back then it, was, it wasn't seen before. Yeah, like, yeah uh, back then it was something new. So yeah. I'd be out in the audience improvising, mucking around, I remember in Adelaide, it was the first time at Theberton Theatre in Adelaide, big theatre, holds 2,000 yeah. people, sold yeah, out, yeah, packed. Yeah. I'm in the crowd. This this guy sees me, this sort of dodgy looking dude, sees that he's on the camera. While I'm, whilst I'm having a chat to him, gets a joint out in the theatre and lights it. And and, smokes it. and the crowd got nuts, right? They just go, like, what could he do? But this is what happens. So they come up after the show often, right? Yeah. And they say, yeah. and I, I would say, no, no, no. But Joe, this is true, I, and I'm ashamed to admit it. I actually found it was easier to accept yeah. the drugs, right? right. Because it, it happened a lot. Sure, right? Because otherwise you've got to argue back. Yeah, and yeah. Out, it's okay, and there's no, other people no. waiting. Yeah. Okay, yeah. hey, thanks, cuz, and they'd be pumped. They go, yeah, I gave Habib some drugs, and they'd piss off, right? And they'd wow. leave. Wow. And it, it, wow. it was actually a lot easier for them. I say yes, and they leave. But here's the other thing that happens, right? Two things happen yeah. after shows. Always, they come up, they go, they try to give me drugs. And the other question yeah. they asked me is, hey, Habib, you got any drugs on you? Have you got any drugs on your way? And, of course, what happened was, I'd say, as a matter yeah. of fact, I do. <laughs> 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 this is true, right? <laughs> and what... A, and you would give them the drugs that yes, someone gave you? Yes, whatever, po- whatever was in my <sighs> pocket from whatever I collected, I'd give out. And the, wow. it would blow their minds away. they go, oh, my God, Habib wow. just gave me some real drugs. And they'll go off and they would just wow. be, I remember spinning. So the point is this, during that, during that tour, Joe, I, I don't know whether, 
I'm not aware to be shocked or to laugh at that. This is unbelievable. You're going to laugh because during that tour, right, laugh, during that tour I was yeah. a genuine drug dealer, but I was making no yeah. money. <laughs> <laughs> I was... I was I was a medium, right? I was just a medium. But you, but you, I've never heard you say this on stage. No, no, you, I, you, I, 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 see, that, I haven't said that story material. before. I should say that. That is fantastic material. Yeah, yeah. I was, and like whatever, it, like it didn't matter what was in my pocket. I didn't know what I was getting, but what what it was yeah. coming was going out. Of course, because you don't know, you don't do that sort of yeah. thing. You wouldn't know what 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 people give you a white powder or what the hell's this? Could you imagine from their yeah. point of view, they've watched a live yeah. show. They've come up to yeah. my, me, you know, my character and said, yeah. Habib, do you have any drugs in you? And I give him real drugs. Oh, my God. I hope the police aren't watching this. But anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> I made no profits at all. You know? like, but could you imagine from their point of view? It would just blow them away. Wow. But, you know, it was just to, um, you know, it was just to get by. It was the only thing I, I hope could... the media don't pick up on it. Imagine, that. imagine the headlines. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And now the the other thing is the other the other really interesting thing about you being on Fat Pizza was that your wife on Fat yes. Pizza was was her name Tula Tula was, was, yep. was the character that was my wife, Tula, Tula the character on your wife went on to become a huge Hollywood star and, and for those of you who don't know we're talking about Rebel Wilson that's right Rebel Wilson massive international star and. She, I, I remember she came on, Paulie uh, found, I guess, she, she, I remember him saying, i got this girl, Rebel Wilson. She was very good with the impro mm-hmm. too. She was great with the right. impro. And a lot of my lines... Did she ever do stand-up? I don't, I don't not remember. Not really. I don't she she was more theatre no, sports okay. background and acting, but she was really, yeah. she was destined for acting from day one, right? Yeah. She, even when she was a teenager, Joe, you remember, she yeah. changed her name to Rebel, right? Because that's not a real name. Everyone knows it because it's out in the media now, right? Um, but she wanted an acting name. Like a super, so she gear her whole life. She had these dreams about being a star, and it all came true, right? But she was so on, on the on the pizza show. My, my a lot of my lines would be ad lib, ad lib, ad lib, which I loved, right? And I'd love to ad lib some stuff and improvise. And she was good at all. She was good at that also. And so Paulie got us together, and he knew like there'd be some a lot of ad libbing back and forth, and it just worked from day one. Like we got along, she was she was a very sweet girl, and very driven, and and really loved acting. Like my passion was stand up comedy. I was never acting, it never is, right? I love acting, but my passion is stand up. I love a lot. Always, you know, no matter what I do, as long as I can do stand up, I'm happy. Like, uh, and, and, and people know that. Like, I've done TV, this, that, different stuff. I've got to always do stand up comedy. But like Jerry Seinfeld, he's huge. He still loves to get out and does a bit yeah, of stand-up. Jerry, right? no Jerry loves to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so yeah. I, I'm thinking, no matter how old I am, I just always, as long as I'm going to stand up, right? Yeah, yeah. Rebel Wilson, she goes to, um, she gets a bit of success in Australia. Her character's yeah. very popular. Yeah. Uh, the episode where we got married was huge. Yeah. Uh, we did a one-hour episode. Like, yeah, right. Um, and look, like a lot of act- actors and actresses, she went to LA for, for, for a break. Yeah. And a lot of people don't get a break. Yeah. But, you yeah, know. That's true. You, a lot you of people live for a long, long time. And don't, long they time, short time. Yeah. They they come back and she within a couple of months she got a, uh, a spot on Bridesmaids, and yeah. she stole the scene. She was funny, of course she was funny. You know, yeah. Yeah. she's great. She's a great performer, and um, the movie was big. Yeah, that was it. Two things happened: bang, bang, and then you know, of course she's because she's Australian, Joe. When Australian actors go there. The Americans love it because you know why? We're not up ourselves. Yeah, we're down to earth, yeah. We're yeah. down to earth yeah. and, and we work and we say nothing's a problem. And they're going, look at this girl. She, she's improvising. She writes her own lines. She's funny. She's hardworking. And bang, away she goes. You know, And it's fantastic. And I'm proud of her. I'm really, really proud of Do her. Do you still keep in contact with the Rebel? You know what? We have. Like, yeah. you know, we, yeah. uh, online. And sometimes, like, you know, Rob and I have even had dinner with her when, yeah. she, when she comes back, you know, back in yeah. uh, back in town. Because she flies to Sydney a lot because her family's from Sydney. Yeah. And, um, you know, she's at a stage now where she can just pick and choose her projects. And Good luck I to say, her. She's done well. Fantastic. Good, Good luck Good to her, man. Yeah. Because she's worked hard for it. I hope you enjoyed the first part of my chat with Tahir. Next week, we discuss with Tahir the ins and outs of his comedy craft writing what really happens backstage at some of the biggest comedy shows in Australia and what it was like being at a comedy club when the late Robin Williams decided to turn up and try out new material. Chat then.